Welcome to episode 102 of the Startup Show. Today we are here at the Techno Park in Zurich and we are talking to the dean and co-founder, Laura Mayer of Propulsion Academy. Today we are talking about the future of education, web development, data science, and all interesting topics that are going to be really relevant in the education space in the next few years. Make sure to stay tuned. Welcome everybody to episode 102 of the Startup Show of season two. Today, I have the big pleasure to host the Dean and co-founder of the Propulsion Academy. Laura, welcome to the show. Thank you, Cedric. Great to be here. Big fan of your show and welcome to Technopark. Thank you very much. I appreciate it uh, for hosting me here at the Technopark. As you probably know, at the end of season one and at episode 101, we changed the structure of these videos a little bit to more target and understand what investors are looking for. So today, as usual, we start um, by trying to understand who is really standing behind Propulsion Academy. And Laurent, please take it away and give us a short introduction about yourself. Hey, my name is Laurent Meyer. I've been in Zurich before, and about eight years ago, I had an opportunity to make my life here, yeah. uh, thanks to uh, my father being professor of ETH Zurich. I originally, I grew up in California to French parents. And my background has always been in business development, in technology, uh, also in online marketing. I've worked also in, in a startup in Paris. I have my MBA, what brought me here to Zurich. Um, it's a great scene here, and yeah. I'm happy to be here. Very good. You said like you worked in various different places. How come you at some point decided that like now is the time to start your own thing? I, again, I grew up in, in, in California, so that helps always uh, with all these uh, startups all over the place. But I, I think in terms of uh, working for big companies, I, I had some great times. But with all these ideas all over the place, I really wanted to ride the wave of startups and, and go on my own. And with Propulsion Academy, it was really the, the right opportunity for that. So if you remember, let's say, like the, the, the early days of, of your, let's say, education place, can you remember how, how that was like to really start it off, like the first few months of, the, of your... Endeavor. We're in education. Um, yeah. We're in ed tech. So it, you hear a lot about technologies being developed, but we're one step before that. All the great companies that you interview build great technology products. Developers on that always started with education. This has always been our focus. I did my MBA and I loved it. What was combined with the fact that we keep hearing all over the place, there are not enough software developers. And with these two our computer science professors at ETH, this is always in our, in our head. I've been around that, the ETH scene, thanks to my, to my father. father yes. Education is really important, and we don't see anybody, people are saying, you know, it needs to be digital, there needs to be more, more talent, but nobody's really doing anything about it. We met a couple years ago, and we, and we found out about the, the coding academy movement happening in the U.S., so with these two university professors who are big fans of, of finding a way to get more people, talent into, into computer science, we wanted to join this movement of, of the coding academies, yeah. which was teaching practical project-based programming to people from other d disciplines who didn't have a chance to go and get a computer science degree when they were younger. Right. So maybe, you know, just to, to kind of like complete the whole picture of the, the Propulsion Academy, maybe you can give us like a short explanation of like what exactly you're offering and what exactly is, let's say, the idea behind the Propulsion Academy. Sure. So the idea behind Propulsion Academy is to give people a chance to become software developers or data scientists. Yeah. Those are our two programs. The way we do that is we put these 12-week programs together that really focus on the practical nature of coding and, and data science. We open it up to everyone. Anyone can get into our programs. Of course, there are, there's a personal interview where we test on motivation. Yeah. Motivation is key for our programs. Anyone can get through them, but you have to be motivated to pass the interviews, so the personal interview and the technical interview. And we've had people from all walks of life uh, do that. And the point is to really uh, meet this demand for, for software developers and, and data scientists through this practical way uh, of, of training. But I'm curious to know how you test motivation. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, uh, well, we just, uh, I don't, you know, you don't have to disclose your yeah. secret sauce. Here, I won't. But, like, uh, <laughs> but I'm uh, curious to know how you test the well, motivation. We, we just tell them what's, in, what's involved. There's uh, these interviews, then you have to do the pre-work before the class starts, yeah. and then you have to get through the program, which is intensive, you know, 60, 70 hours a week, all the way to till till, uh, presenting the final project in the last two weeks. You know, we tell them that what it entails. This program, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. It's very rewarding. 
of course, when you when you finish it. But there's you know there's some, a certain amount of commitment to put into it, and that's how we test on motivation. When you, when you look at let's say all of these different students that came through your classes already, is there anything that you say like this is a common denominator between all of them where you say like well this is kind of like the the, the perfect student what we're looking for or is there anything like say characteristic you would say this is the, it's most suitable for that type of person? We've learned that there's no there are no general rules. Our students come from everywhere. For example, in our in our web development class, we've had. Uh, an ex-professional volleyball player, all the way to uh, a recent mechanical engineer graduate from ETH Zurich. And there's no general uh, rule. Now for data science, we, we do see that most of the students have masters or PhDs from the sciences. Could be in political science or, or in finance. But uh, it, it really varies. It, it really varies. Again, how we see that the, they'll make it through is if they pass our interviews and finish the pre-work. That's that they all share. And, and you know, the pre-work is important has to be done before uh, the start of the class. Right, right. So let's say I, I sign up for one of these courses, let's say data science. What does, it, let's say, one course entail besides, let's say, the 60 or 70 hours of work a week? In terms of, uh, of what you learn? Of curriculum, yeah. Right, so um, you're going to learn um, the most important um, tools and concepts of data science. So this includes statistics, uh, machine learning, natural language processing, also R and Python. The, those are really important tools for that. But you're going to, and at the end of the program, we'll match you with company data, data from companies that you're going to um, analyze and uh, work on, uh, the data sets, and to present your final project. We have close collaborations with companies. It's amazing to see them give us data for our, our students to, to work on, because this really gives them something concrete to show at the end. Uh, right, to both that. sides. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a win-win. Yeah, Sounds yeah. especially also like a very hands-on course like for people to really understand uh, what, what data science means because I guess data is the new gold. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a lot of data out there and companies don't always know what to do with it. Obviously, we, we like that we can do something with it. Yes. Uh, uh, our students can. Most of them already have you know, university degrees. They've put time into the classroom already. So we try to not give them too many slides. Um, our students don't really like slides. <laughs> so uh, we, we try to avoid that. Give me some examples. How does it work? And let's do some exercises. Right. And so what are, let's say, if you work together with companies, what are some, some let's say, exercises or projects that you've worked on that are, let's say, compelling? So 2017 was our pilot year. Uh, we graduated 50 students through three web development classes and one data science class. Today, as it happens, we just started our second data science class. So it's a, it's a great. Thank you. Uh, it's many great, more, too many more. Too many right? more, <laughs> yeah, ab ab absolutely. And which is great about today's class is that it's half women. So there are 11 students, six of them are, are, are females. Again, so this is a great for technology, more diversity in tech is really important to us. Now, going back to your, to your question, uh, we worked on, on the final projects for the first uh, data science class over the summer. We worked with Expedia. They gave us some information on the hotel ranking system. So they give us a data set. And uh, the student in question um, worked on this challenge and gave them a conclusion. We also worked with a burglary risk model. We got some information from an insurance company here in Switzerland, and they gave us information on different neighborhoods in Zurich. Our student there put together some analysis uh, on how likely you are to get robbed. In, in, uh, in, in which area? In or? which area, and like in Kais, you know, or whatever Kais. So that was really something concrete that he, he, he put together through that. Right. So now we talked a lot about, let's say, the data science. When we go over a little bit more into WebDev, um, what kind of like languages are currently um, you know taught? I remember when I did a class, we really started in the very early like let's say HTML, CSS, that we got up to JavaScript and PHP. What do you think are let's say the trends, or what are you teaching at the moment? We have to realize coding academies adapt to their environments. Right. Um, in the U.S., there are about a hundred schools that do what we do here. In Switzerland, we are the only one. And each school will will teach uh, certain technologies that they believe are important for their students to, to learn and then get a job afterwards. We have realized in Switzerland for the web development program, JavaScript is really important for the front end. You can't get off JavaScript due to its dominance in the market. On the back end, we had some discussion. We first did Java, but now we were sold on Python. We think that Python is, is a great choice to complement JavaScript, and it's also a bridge to data science, because obviously Python is a uh, is uh, really um, important in that world. You briefly also mentioned the machine learning um, and let's say NLP. Where do you see, and I read a couple of articles about this, 
um, that in the future there will be no development because computers will develop itself. Also websites develop itself. I don't really understand so much about that, but like, is that something that like you see that could be happening? I'm not going to get into that debate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you too I, Swiss. I, you became too Swiss. <laughs> yeah. um, obviously, you know, that's what people say. I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, for people and potential uh, students from all types of industries, the sooner you get onto the data science bandwagon or the developer, the better it will be for your future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I, I definitely agree. I, I'm so happy I did it because right now, even though I'm much more on the business side of anything that I look at, uh, I still understand at least what the developers are talking about. Um, so I, I, highly, I highly recommend to at least get an understanding of what kind of development there is out there. So thank you very much for giving us insights. Now, as you know, um, in our new type of structure of the startup show, we have a couple of sections. So now let's move on to the second one, which is the audience asks. So I went around online, I think you also saw it, um, where I ask people, and you can also submit your question on LinkedIn, Facebook, and also join my WhatsApp group where you can directly ask me a question to, to my mobile number. And today, I, I have a guy, a friend of mine, I, I studied with him at the University of St. Gallen during my master's, and his name is Patrick Walchle. And he wants to ask the following, what makes your academy special and different from the others? Is the market huge or do you have an innovative methodology? Okay, great. Uh, thanks for that question, uh, yeah, Patrick. That. Since you know, we're, we're, we're the first here in, in Switzerland, we don't have much to, to compare from. Uh, in terms of a university, we're complementary to university. University grads are usually you know, 18 to 23. So in terms of, uh, of comparing with Switzerland, um, there's not much there. Only that we, we open the door to people, like I mentioned, who don't have the chance when they're 25 or 30 to, to, uh, to get, a, get this kind of education. And again, our students graduate and they get jobs. And you can see on our testimonials, it works. And that's rewarding. Now, in terms of other countries now, um, there are some coding academies in, in Barcelona. And there are relatively few generally in Europe. It's not much of a comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, we bank on Switzerland. Switzerland, the attractivity uh, also... The, our, our program is tough. If you make it through it, as I mentioned, it's doable but tough. Uh, but we right now we you know we, we get calls all the time from our students who get jobs and we put them up on our on our site. Now, if you want to compare to the U.S., U.S. is a much developed market. There are fifty thousand computer science graduates a year in the U.S. Coding academies. There are about a hundred of them, and the oldest one is five years old. So it's a very uh, developing industry. There are twenty five thousand coding academy graduates in the U.S. So it contributes to about 50%. We can't really compare uh, with the U.S. Uh, other than people who want to come to uh, Switzerland. It's a great place for data science. It's a great place for web development. That's what we, we, we bank on. Okay, very good. So thank you very much. Thank you to Patrick for asking the question. So now we get, get into the quick fire question and answers. I will ask you five questions. You have ideally not more than 30 seconds to answer. Okay. okay. Good. Ready for it? Sure. Okay. Number one, what would you like to see in the next five years in your ecosystem? Great question. So in terms of the ecosystem, I think a coding, coding academies are very important to the startup scene. But we would like to see more classes offered. Um, we're, you know, we're startups, so we, we can't do a lot of things. Uh, we'd also like to see some of the final projects that students present. These are great ideas, both on the full stack. We'd like to see those developed in, some of those developed into commercial products and also offer uh, uh, more, more classes and more courses on different subjects. Second question. You have to finish the sentence, okay? <laughs> yeah. My biggest mistake as a startup. <laughs> um, that, that's a great question. Probably uh, underestimating the, the importance of, uh, of classroom space. Um, Classroom space. Yeah, it was hard to find. Um, we should have spent more time in, in finding, you know, uh, we found it, but uh, it wasn't always in the, in the ideal city. But now, now we're, we're good. Now you're good. Okay, very good. Third question. How did you get your first paying student, I wrote client, but let's say your first paying student? Uh, that, that's actually the, the biggest reward. Uh, we did some online advertising yeah. and we, we promoted some generous scholarships. And it was just so rewarding to, to get that, that first student to apply on, on our webpage. And okay. it was through a, a LinkedIn ad. Straight up LinkedIn? Yeah. Okay. Any, any, any advice you can give how to do a you know, good LinkedIn ad? We've gotten pretty good at LinkedIn. Really? Uh, uh, it's, it's hit or miss, uh, I think. Uh, no, you just uh, 
keep it short and put some nice images and make sure you get your targeting right on, right. The, on, the, uh, on the interface. Cool, okay. What's most important to you in an investor? Obviously, um, synergy. Um, what we look for in an investor is someone who really values education. You have a lot of the, the people in the U.S., the big entrepreneurs like Zuckerberg, Bezos. Bezos invested heavily in coding academies because he believes in education. There's a great revenue model with education, but you know, you're really making a difference and you have to really believe that IT education is important, especially for the future of Switzerland. What's your best advice for getting customer feedback? Uh, ask. Uh, ask, ask a, uh, a lot. Uh, spend time with your with your students. Have apples with them. Drink beers. Uh, make sure to keep cl uh, close contact with them. We love our students. We'll do anything for them. And I think it's important to, to keep an open mind when they give you feedback. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Now we have one last section where you can really show us like what you can advise us in our section called expert advice. <laughs> So let's say someone in your position can say, what is, let's say, your advice you would give to someone who is about to start coding? What well, should be the first steps? Well, uh, do it. Try it. Go do some simple examples. There are a lot of online resources. Uh, don't get discour discouraged. It's, it's a matter of just putting the time in. Keep going at it. Many of people have done it before uh, from all walks of life. As I mentioned, from artists to engineers, it, it's for everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm adding a bonus here. Sure, go for it. What is, let's say, an entrepreneurship advice you would give? Uh, it, for, for starting? For starting, yes. Again, do it. Go for it. Don't don't yeah, don't hold back. <laughs> yeah. um, and adapt adapt to, to every circumstance. It takes longer than you think, um, unless you're lucky, of course. But um, if if you believe it, there are always ups and downs. Um, but just go for it. Right. I think that's a beautiful way to end this episode 102. Thank you very much, Rogan, for taking the time. Thanks, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for hosting me here at the Techno Park. I uh, thank you everybody who tuned in today and for watching. And I'll see you next week. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Rolf Adelsberger. I'm the co-founder of Sensorix. I will be in the startup show next Monday, so please tune in and also subscribe to the channel.